It's a very low barrier to get into the Gronk Squad. That's crazy. We've committed to do the Daily Talk Show for 10 years. So, hi, guys. Hi, guys. Put it in the calendar. Oh, that one here. I'd just like to check the temperature in the room. I told you my squeegee story. It is outrageous. Come on, let's go. Woohoo! Yeah! Okay. Hello, Melbourne! <laughs> Yeah, we've done a live show. It's episode 1022. It's the last ever episode of the Daily Talk Show. And that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, no, we won't. We'll never see you again. Mm-hmm. Now, nah, um, welcome, everybody. Uh, today is, it wasn't planned to be the last episode. Mm-hmm. As of yesterday, it only got reshuffled. Melbourne's going back into, are we, um, are we ready? Are right we ready? to go. Right to go. Right, right to go. go. Right to go. That's the new acting premier's. Catch cry, right mm-hmm. to go. Which is what um, well, Dan copied Andrews. it off Dan. Oh, yeah, did he? That was yeah, a Dan yeah. thing. Okay, yeah, that's okay. why that's funny. Well, yeah. right, right to go. Right to go. Right to mm-hmm. go. Okay. Uh, Melbourne's going back into lockdown as of 11.59 p.m. tonight, which is Thursday. Mm-hmm. What, what's the date? The 20... Well, you I found it, it yesterday. Yeah. You said the 25th yesterday. It was the 26th <laughs> yesterday. Today's the 27th. So, the 27th of... May 2021 mm-hmm. is the last episode of da- the Daily Talk Show. Did you ever think about that being the date? <laughs> no. No, never. Never. Um, I mean, to be honest, if we go back to episode one, I think you forgot the name of the podcast. Yes. Yeah, it was hard to remember back then. It was. It, but it's sort of, it's stuck a little bit. Anyway, we've got, we've got some nice emails that we've received. Um, it's a celebration. And it's, and it's just gone midday. So, I've cracked out the- mm-hmm. F- uh, some fresh, the Daily Talk Show big cups, mm-hmm. and um, the best thing about these is throw them around, catch, and we're going to pop a bottle of prosecco. It's not going to mm-hmm. be too loose yeah. because we're just going to have a. Well, we wanted something in our, like I was saying to you, TJ, the legacy. Yeah. This is going to be online forever. You don't want to be like, oh wow, that last <laughs> episode, yeah, was yeah. really bad. Would you take the whole thing down if one of us got cancelled? Because then they'd be Are looking. Are you worried about getting cancelled? <laughs> Not at all, dude. No. No, no, no. What? So, what you're saying is say- So, you get cancelled. Mm-hmm. No, we're keeping it all up. Hold I think you to it. I think we'll be- Hold yeah. you to it. No, I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine anything like that happening. Um, so, just after you pop the Prosecco, we have a message from Scooter Derek. We didn't a- ask anyone to do any video messages or anything no. like that. No. But and we in- also didn't ask- Anyone around the podcast desk could have their laptop audio yep. still on, but George happened to- And so. he's rocking Apple Mail after everything you've been through <laughs> with Apple Mail. After every blow up you've been through with Josh, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're fucking still yeah. rock- rock- rocking Apple well, Mail. The Apple no, he's Mail. on Spark. Well, the Apple- <laughs> oh, I'm on both. Yeah, he's got two, the only guy that's got two email clients. Can I just say Spark? Um, mm-hmm. Email client? Yep. Email client. It's, it's, it's not very good, is it? That's the reason uh, yeah, it's, it. got, it's got some issues, but um, can we tease- at the end of the show, George will tell us where he's going next. Oh, sure. Okay. Right. That's a good That's and a good and, we'll, and Jess too or no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jess doesn't have anything lined up yet. <laughs> okay. that, no, well, you've just blown it. Yep. All right. Hang on. Ex- okay. I'll pop the Prosecco. Here we go. We can't lose our lease any more than we will. The bond? This goes, the, yeah, the bond. Can they ask for more than the bond? Yep. <laughs> like, oh, oh, yes. A light. That sounded um, good. Oh, that's okay. water. So, TJ, Hand whilst you, you do that, yep. Jess, can you press play on Scooter Derek giving a message, which he did in green screen, and I've just done a quick chroma key okay. so that he, it's like he's in the studio. Go for it, Jess. Hi, guys. Here comes my sincere message to you on your last week, maybe last day. Thanks so much for all the shows. I really appreciate it. I've got... A great, as I've said many, many times, I've got a great deal. I've got a, gained a huge amount from not only getting an idea of what millennials bang on about and what's on your mind, which is important as a father of uh, people approaching teenage years. Um, I've really enjoyed the community around it, uh, not just your staff of recent times, uh, relatively recent times about all the grog squad of the community and uh, all the different people, notwithstanding Ian, uh, it's always interesting to be an old fart in amongst a huge variety, huge range of ages, and it's refreshing and great to see all this content being done. Um, Love the show. 
I mean, it's actually playing now in my studio. I just turned turned the slider down to do this. It's very technical. So there you go. It's been great company when you work alone. It's awesome. Um, thanks for having me on the show so many times. It's certainly given me a certain amount of confidence and and a free session with uh, Pete Shepherd. Thanks, Pete. Uh, probably say a bit of a cheerio to all the Gronk squad and everything. If I don't catch up, I'm sure we'll meet each other uh, here and there in the in the content type circles. But uh, all the best, all of you, and it's been great to meet every one of the, the Gronks. That's for sure. Um, I, I, you might have noticed that I've got a green screen behind me because I thought maybe you could put me on the show one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Forget it. Just you just read it out. All right. So, um, thanks a million. The show's been great, and it's a massive achievement to uh, to do a thousand episodes. I think I calculated it. For a once a week show, which is fucking hard to do, trust me, I know. That's twenty years worth of podcasting. Wow. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Fuck off if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's been great. Um, I just wanted to have a last word. <laughs> Love you guys, and I look forward to playing tons and tons of golf. All right, bye bye. Love you. Love you, Derek. Uh, Scooter, Derek. Thank you. Let's put, raise a glass to um, Scooter, Derek, and the show. Jess has really been stinged on this um, on the pr- Prosecco, Prosecco handout. Josh, you've got half Thank of you. I put too cheers. much in yours, mate. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers the camera. Cheers. Cheers. Um, that was lovely. Thanks, Scooter. Have you thought much about legacy, Josh? Nah. I feel like, so George said, or Jess and George said, <laughs> that- um, oh, you're going to cry. And I feel like George is going in real quick yeah. to be like, can we make Josh cry? Um, I reckon I, who, George, Jess will cry quicker. Nah, she's, nah, she's, nah, she's shaking she's, her head. She's not as talking a anymore. <laughs> she's, um, she's not, she, I think that's a phrase either. I've cried too much recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, what, what does today look like? For us outside of the show, we're, we're, we're going to have a little team mm-hmm. bonding session. Mm-hmm. Which uh, we've done a fair few in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Drinking sessions is what I mean by team bonding. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what a weird time, mm-hmm. George. You were saying how, like, if you think about, it, we started the show in twenty eighteen. Yep, and uh, then February sixteen, twenty eighteen. Yeah, which that you know, it's like you kind of you are committed, but the, it's like something new feels mm-hmm. not like it does until you, and then you find find your feet. You're like, oh, we're actually doing this. And the team, when it goes beyond you and I, mm-hmm. so then when Mason was a part of the show. Yeah. And then 2019, that was a wild year. But then 2020, you hit and then, fuck me, that year just went. Mm-hmm. Mm. More locked. Like, it was- If you were going to pick three years in the, you know, 21st century, <laughs> pretty mental three years to pick. Yeah. Crazy, dude. Um, ben Fordham says. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. And so, it's been a really cool thing to look back and see- the, the ride through COVID mm-hmm. and everything. and Yeah. Um, well, I think, I mean, we got an email last night, um, which was super sweet. Did you see this one, Josh? It was from, I think it's um, Eliza. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. And really nice. Do you want me to read something? Yeah, read it. Uh, hi, guys. I just wanted to write to say thank you for the pod and all the magnificent effort you guys have put in over the years. You and the team have been great company whilst I cook dinner, walk to work, block out the world and sometimes even shower. Since March last year, I've been working from home and hearing from you every day has kept me sane. I love how open you guys have been about your business and journey uh, you have been on. As someone who also works for a small family business, I can totally relate to the highs and the lows. I especially want to thank uh, you for the Mr. <laughs> Mr. for Michael Bungay Stania episode as it really changed the way I approach my clients. I'm very sad to see you guys go, particularly as I'm about to have a baby myself in mid-June and really did think I would have that time to myself each day to check in and listen to you guys. But alas, I will revert to my Audible account and redeem all the unused credits. Um, You should just give you a fucking... Yeah, do you want my login, Eliza? You should give her your (laughs) login for sure. You're right on the Seth Rogen book. Not good. Just because they've, they've, for some reason, they're doing like dramatic scenes in it. And I just Uh, hate that in a book. Eliza, look out. Um, Also, thank you for having an episode on hypnobirth. 
I had no idea what it was and it really opened my ideas, uh, my eyes to all the options. So I'm forever grateful. Mm-hmm. I'll be, th- I'll be thinking of you, Amy and Bodie over June, July and wishing you the best for the birth. Um, on final note, uh, know that whilst you have many sad gronks out there, we understand the decision and think the team has done an incredible job creating a community the sacrifice you guys have made taking time out of your personal lives to bring the daily talk show um, has not gone unnoticed to bring us the daily talk show. I do not doubt that success will continue to follow all of you guys on the next stage in your journey. Thank you again, Josh, Tommy, George, Jess, and Mason. Thanks, Eliza. That's, that's really nice. But on just on that sort of, that's someone who I, I don't know if we've heard from Eliza. No. Never heard from it, mm-hmm. but has been listening. Mm. She's just listening been- to us in the shower. Yeah, so she's just been a number on the dashboard of um, Simplecast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you think about it, all the, like we look at that, Josh, you're in there every day. Mm-hmm. Are you still in there? Uh, don't look at it as much. There was a time where I was we were going to have a dedicated TV with the download numbers. Yeah, they didn't get high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead, but, instead, we got fetch. <laughs> but we've, we've had over 1.5 million downloads mm-hmm. of the show. But it is interesting to think those numbers, Yeah, one they of them is Eliza people. and I yeah. don't, and you don't, connect with them mm-hmm. unless people are contacting you. So that's why it can feel real lonely. That was mm-hmm. one thing I learned from you guys is um, the feeling it's of like- the numbers? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just the feeling of like almost detaching yourself from your work in a way. Like you put, you do, you do the show and you do mm-hmm. your content. And then I found that once it's out there, you kind of, it's just out there. And, and it's helped to stop thinking about what people think about you. Mm. Like worrying about what people might think because compared to- making videos for Instagram or whatever, and you see the comments and the likes and mm. all that sort of thing. You do a podcast and it's, it's out there and then you kind of just move on. You go, all right, well, I don't know what people are listening to right now, but maybe someone's listening to me right now. Mm. I don't really care what they think. Well, it's like the equivalent of, think about if you're going to a cafe with friends, at the end of each time you hang out, are you like fretting about what you said? or And, and so I think that that's where we've gotten the Depends podcast Depends if there was to. a blow up. Yeah. Because then yeah. you've got- Well, so okay. there's always- But the other thing too is with the show, there's always been tomorrow. So, there is more pressure on this episode. True. Because this is it. Um, All right, mate. Uh, Wait a fuck up. Uh, sorry. Put the pressure on. Uh, <laughs> thank yous. We'll do, we'll do a bunch of thank yous. But our partners- Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Amy and Bree. Yeah. Huge. Think Amy about, and Bree. Think about That's like- Massive commitment. Yeah. Like the thing is, the commitment is obviously something that we took on, but- mm. There's so many people around us that it affects or impacts. Isn't it funny, like, like just um, decisions when you're in a relationship uh, are obviously, uh, it does affect someone else. Mm-hmm. But at, this, at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning, I didn't think about it like that because mm-hmm. you don't know, re- like you're kind of just doing something for a bit of fun. To, like you're just like, oh, let's do this. And then you start it. Next minute you're in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. But then it's a bit different to signing a mortgage. Mm. With a partner where you re- you have to go through the planning stage together, but you can like this has become quite large, mm-hmm. and it, them them adapting to that yeah. without us sitting them down saying because you'd never sit down someone down saying here's what's going to happen or maybe maybe you I would. Did episode one I said <laughs> Bree, get did. ready for a wild ride <laughs> maybe you would. your boyfriend's about to get hella famous <laughs> <laughs> and so. Um, but no, you, no, as if you no, 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 no. You're um, just doing it, and they're like, "Yeah, supportive, uh-huh. supportive," because that's mm-hmm. what a great and, partner. And so, be. yeah, that's that's the thing. They've um, uh, gone with it. They've supported us. Even times there was times last year mm. I was like feeling down or whatever, and Bree was like, "No, you've got it. Like you mm. love it." Mm. And so I think that that like from my I've dropped end, the ball in the last few weeks. Oh, Bree's like, no, you joking, know, you've joking. said it. You've said it enough. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking just give it up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they've yeah. agreed with us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've, um, like, <laughs> but that is also a great partner mm-hmm. that when you, you're totally right, like agreeing with w- when it's time mm-hmm. because they're vibing, like a partner should be vibing you mm-hmm. versus what they feel. And then, yeah, because j- there is committed, there, there is committed to the podcast and everything as we are. And so in those, there are the times where it's like, ah, uh, no, like you will feel better after this. Just yeah. go and do it yeah. and all that sort of thing. But then also like the being able to have the conversations around, oh, like what would li- life, l-? it seems silly to think <laughs> that the con- there's a conversation where it's like, what would life look like without doing the podcast? Yeah. Like, isn't it cr- like the fact that that's even a conversation? 
Which it all could, all could just be seen as a bit yeah. silly. But it is in, silly. And that's, what's, that's what's you funny about to. it. You like, need to yeah. approach something uh-huh. with, a, with a bit of silliness mm-hmm. in that respect. A bit of... Um, uh, what's the what's the term? Not like playful, grandfulness. Like it, it helps when you oh sure grandiosity sort of thing. When you are yeah. like no, we need to like mm-hmm. that contributes to the the consistency as well. Well, like, think how intense I was on certain things. So it's like just when the episode was going out, show notes. Like there were so many things where think about how attached I used to be to a lot of those things. And then part of it, like I think um, to your point, GB, it's like you get to a point where you understand what matters and what doesn't matter in the whole grand scheme of things. But it's not to say that those things didn't matter at the start. Like they're good things like build up. So if we had been loose from the start around, oh, you know, if we miss a day or whatever, you'd have weeks without doing a show. There was some of the, the, that were the just non-negotiables of doing the show. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this, about getting it done whenever. And we'll probably stricter at times of doing it at certain times. Um, But that definitely helps. What do you think it like, if we were just to, like, jokes on everyone, this isn't our last day, just audio, there's no bells and whistles, no mm. show notes. Do you think for someone out there, do you think that energy can reap a reward? Well, Like with the yeah, consistency? Yeah, because you never, you never stand still with any of this stuff. Like you're always going to be evolving and change. Like if you think about how many different versions, mm. whether it's like doing the two episodes a day, that type of thing. Black and white t-shirts was a big thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, was that was just a, at the that start was a, to that keep was a it non-negotiable. easy. non-negotiable. That was, to keep it easy. Mm-hmm. Bit of fun. Bit yeah. of fucking, bit of silliness. Um, back to you, George, what you said about what we were saying before. Well, there was the bit on the legacy. For me, the legacy stuff is friendships, relationships, all that sort of thing. Oh, and yeah. And so, I went on, like, there's, there's obvious gronks that have been a big part mm. of the whole journey. Mason being one of them. He was great. Gemma. Scooter. He's got a list. Pete. He's got the website up. Happy Harry, Ryan John, yeah, Diavella, Harps, Trev, all these people. Like these are people that have been consistent. Mm. Grace as well. Think about like Mason and Grace finding mm. love on the podcast. That's beautiful. Didn't that have is. to. Didn't have to share shit. Didn't have to share the what you know their life. Mm, mm, mm. But Except did. for when Derek sat down with Mister Ninety Seven <laughs> and talked to him about his yeah. sex life. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Fuck, dude. You guys got paid for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, was on, he was also on- He was on payroll. On payroll. Yeah. So, so he got paid all, for that. What are you trying um, to say, George? Nah. But yeah, uh, Ryan Shelton. Yeah. There's so many, there's so many people. Um, and obviously, Crystal Andrews. Like you think about um, the amount of relationships we've formed. People have supported. Um, George, are you able to see how many guests we've had on? Well, um, according to my video that I did for the thousandth episode, hundred and something, hundred and seventy-five, uh-huh. one hundred and seventy-five <coughs> guests, a lot, and Fordo, uh, Fordo, Fordo. Fordo. Was, was a lot of these have become uh, Hayden Dib got a fucking tattoo. Fuck yeah, baby. Um, and so yeah, I think um, yeah, that's I think from a legacy perspective, mm. that's what I think about is it's like there's a lot of people that we didn't know going into this. Yeah. Um, and I think that. A lot of people have grown. They've had their own creative experience. You think about, but even think about like Gemma and Pete became friends through the show. Scooter, like the fact that we play golf with Scooter and like all of mm. that stuff is is really cool. Mm. It is. Um, the George, the other thing outside the legacy that you mentioned was um, uh, not, not worrying about what other people think, all of that stuff. There's definitely a muscle that is grown or a wall that goes up that you build with bricks, you know, on the border of your mind that is um, shutting that noise out. Because I think if you, once you mm. stop, like right now, I, I, I feel like I don't have that in my head mm. about thinking about what is it a wall? I think a, think a wall might be the wrong- A wall, but a I muscle. Think ex- like I think yeah. people say muscle because it, it refers to strength and it refers yeah, to yeah. something that's been worked at. Yeah. You could call it a callus, which isn't as nice as- <laughs> mu- A muscle is like you've intentionally built it I think, to shut out mm-hmm. a bit of that monkey, monkey brain that everybody mm-hmm. has. And my point is that it's still there. And I, I could imagine if I stopped doing content for a year, mm. didn't actually put anything out, I'm sure I would still have some version. Uh, the, the muscle would go down. Put something out. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I think there's a... So, the way that I visualize it would be inner strength rather than a wall. So, think about like just working on being okay with what Mate, you're doing. I went back to muscle. I went yeah, back to muscle. Yeah, yeah. I think the core strength thing is good. Core strength? Because um, you like golf. Because well, I, I, bi- I, I was thinking more biceps. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the str- it's the inner strength of being able to like not have things. There's a reason Dave sw- Vella has biceps yeah. the big, as big as he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the strength to to YouTube. Um, but yeah, no, I think um, like obviously that's a, a big component of it. Yeah, being comfortable in just maybe it's not, not that s- you don't care, but it's like no. yeah, putting out so many bits of content mm-hmm. for years consistently. I guess that yeah, the anxiety kind of goes a little bit in like you don't feel it as much because you know you can just come back the next day like you said mm-hmm. and so yeah i reckon you're right if you took a year off and then did something that you're so proud of you'd definitely be feeling shit what are people going to think mm. maybe well maybe there's the um like you said josh you can rock up tomorrow there's the lingering time between the last thing and the next mm-hmm. and then you're like actually just can do your own head in or you're comparing it you know to what was done before Mm. What do you think the main – Jess is a content creator, influencer. What do you think the main um, fear for people and content? Because even when I think about like the – I was thinking about there's such – there's a fucking life outside of creating content. As much as we're in the content creation business, there's also the people that don't really care for creating it, I was don't care to, about yeah. the status of it or any of that. Any Like they might just consume Netflix. They love it. Mm-hmm. But I was listening to a bit like the um, the radio last night and they were talking all Which about one? nurses, ABC. Yeah, right. Um, talking about nursing and it was interesting just around like, you know, we talk about them being superheroes and all that sort of thing and nurses were saying, we actually need to change the language because they're just regular people doing, specta- <laughs> doing spectacular things. Yeah. But they have all of the They, they don't have some mm. sort of... Um, uh, they're not invincible to all of this stuff. They just manage and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, it feels like on the grand scheme of th- things, what we're doing is very insignificant. It, Your question to Jess. To- totally. And and so, um, what do you think the fear... Are you hot now, Jess? Do you want hot. Me- well, lucky I, I turned hot. off the air con. Yeah. The heater. The heater, yeah. which comes out of the AC. The conditioned air the conditioned. could be hot. Yeah, true. Exactly. True. true. Um, what do you think the fear for most people <laughs> creating content is... Maybe just that they're not good enough or what they're putting out isn't good enough. I mean, you got off Instagram. Yeah. For, for Is there, can I'm you thinking, relate I'm thinking any more, answer to that? Well, I don't know because I don't think my personal fits within that. I got off that for different reasons. But I think creatively, if I was doing something, so like my calligraphy or whatever, like putting that out, I just couldn't do that. So putting or, yourself out there. Yeah. That's a thing you hear a lot. About and so consistency. Which I haven't helps. thought about that at all. Which is funny, but I think early days I definitely did. It's like the guy who sold his art. You know, five hundred days of doing art. It's like mm-hmm. if you're doing one piece of art, it's the pressure's on. But if you're doing it every day for five hundred days, it's gets easier and easier. The, but so the easy then equation is do it every day. Mm. But then maybe that's not realistic for everybody well, in terms of say this podcast. Yeah, there's a reason we're stopping. And it's because of George. It's his fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he charges way too much. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, it's Jackson, Jess. It was, it was us. <laughs> it was all our fault and I take full responsibility. No, but um, yeah, the, yeah, the, what, what, what's this saying? Um, putting yourself out there. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, Gypsy Tales had the- He just texted me. The, <laughs> um, so he's got a great- Far, He just said, fuck, just saw seven day lockdown. Yeah. So Jace has a great podcast, Gypsy Dude. Tales. He's it's been grinding doing, for yeah. years, and um, he had uh, is it his name Mitch from um, uh, Angry yeah. Dad. Yeah, Mitch. And so I saw a snippet where Mitch said, "Okay, I'm going to start running every day," and um, just how hard it was at the start versus right. at the hundred day mark, and how much easier it is. Um, and so I think like doing three k's a day. Yeah, it's doing great. something regular is awesome. It's definitely. Yeah. And I, I guess the trap is that it, you think that it has to be spectacular. I think for me, what I want to do is do things regularly, but actually a lot smaller. We, we spoke about it a bunch. It was like how good I would feel when I would do like errands. And I'm like, I'm the errand guy. <laughs> um, or, you know, it just fell back into too much of your identity. We need realistic yeah. goals. It was too, it was too, it was too yeah. 
Um, no, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Jess, what have you learnt through all of this, or what are you thinking right now? What's uh, what's one takeaway from working with us? Because everything else is bad, but give <laughs> us one, please. Um, <laughs> I just I think the biggest thing that um, I was talking to you about it the other night, Josh. Um, that I've learnt from you guys is is to just bring yourself and kind of just be real mm. um, and not worry about what other people are thinking. Um, communication is mm. maybe summarises mm. it all. Um, yeah, probably communication. Communication. Mm-hmm. And In I th- what way? Um, just to be what yourself. What does that mean for you? Just to be yourself and not um, have your, you know, protective barriers up and your walls up and that kind of thing or just um, being curious. Mm. Is it high? Is it when you say be you? Is it that you haven't been you in those other moments where, like, are you comparing it to a another yeah. approach that you've taken? Yeah, I think it's it's um, like in a professional environment, like obviously PR, PR. <laughs> um, you know, you bring a different version of yourself to work, um, and then in different groups and, and scenarios of people, you bring different versions of yourself. Um, and I think something that I loved about myself since starting here is. Um, just not tolerating the bullshit and just kind of being me, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I that's the studio audience <laughs> clapping. There's 400 people here. Do you remember, I, that was a goal. <laughs> <laughs> I went to get bleachers, yeah, remember? We well, looked at hundreds. I remember I going to, to a preface, school. It was before COVID. Before COVID, before yeah. Before the word yeah. COVID was existing. Mm-hmm. But, for um, us, for our minds. Yeah, no, just uh, from a thankful uh, perspective, think about people like, uh, Wayne Peters, mm. Mm. Uh, Gronks that have just been consistent in emailing mm. and being part, live oh. for being part of it. Like live, like created that amazing artwork. Um, Which again, you, it's so nice. And maybe there's a version of people making themselves known mm. to mm-hmm. the people who are creating that is, that's putting themselves out there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, that's so, so thankful for someone willing, like Eliza and like Olivia for, doing all the work they've done mm-hmm. just to put in the effort to get get in touch with us and let us know. Because some of the emails that have come through, they're like, oh, you guys will smash it for whatever you do next. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like that, but I don't not feel like that. But it's when you see someone saying, like someone's version of you in their mind can be different to the version that you have in your own mind. Not that I think that I can't do anything else, but I just think this is fucking normal. This has become normal mm-hmm. doing a show every day, whatever it's been, like whatever we've been doing for the last couple of years. I can't remember. It's what will you miss most out of the whole thing? Uh, I don't know yet because I haven't, I'm sure I'll miss it. Mm. I'm probably, you know, uh, what do I miss? Um, I mean, if I'm thinking about it, it's then like I the getting just, just a real massive obvious one over here. What? what what, miss me? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no, I was about to get there, you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I, fucking yeah. oh, I miss, miss this fucking bullshit. Get out, get out. No, but just like us being together, you know, I was going to say playing basketball, but just doesn't like going to the cafe. Yeah. So all we, the things that you did pef- before George. nine. <laughs> I said I'll, I'll fucking miss George. No, That's but the, the team getting together. I'll miss you too, George. <laughs> the team getting together. Of course I'll fucking yeah. miss Josh. That's the end. We do that at the end. Yeah. And George will have I'll two suck him houses. Off at the end. Yeah. No, George will have two houses, you know. <laughs> and he'll rent he'll his one. Two Christmases. Yeah, yeah. You're fucking two sets of presents. Oh, we got a, another one. Another person to thank. Glyn. Oh, Glyn's He's been just, amazing. He just messaged me. Looks like you're going, it looks like you're going to get your wish to break lockdown for the final show. What a mess. See, I did think about that today, Glyn. Uh, Earlier in the week, we said, oh, whatever, lockdown will break it and oh, come yeah. in. It's, prob- Jeez, it's got to be more serious, mate. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking the Indian strain yeah. before. Blah, 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 blah. It's gone mad. Uh-huh. And so there was a decision mm-hmm. because there's other people involved, Jess and, and George. And so like we, it's masks indoors. It's masks outdoors. Well, it's a bit yeah. more full on, Glenn. Thanks, mate, from Florida. I know you fucking <laughs> guys don't have COVID there. Yeah. And you got your vaccine. They, so you're de- fucking, you- they definitely have COVID, <laughs> yeah. Mate, it's the joke. You're not getting the joke? No, I didn't quite get it. George, did you get the joke? I wasn't listening. <laughs> no, well, no, the thing there's, yeah, no yeah, yeah. there's no COVID in COVID. Florida. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, Florida yeah, yeah. is yeah. the joke. But I think that probably- A man in, in Florida. Yeah, but- um, <laughs> it's, no, it's COVID around the world, dude. Yeah. I thought it was obvious enough. It's so everywhere. You forgot that we also all gave up 
um, comedy. So <laughs> yeah, we're stopped yeah. doing we're, comedy, we're which is um, I'm yeah. trying to hold us in there, but yeah. obviously I'm. You're failing. the only one that's and it's failed and it's fucking. I've bombed. Um, the final epi- no, think about it. Okay, we all need to think like this is because there is like talking about the um, you know protective mechanism that we have, which is he's about to cry. He wants to cry. Mm. He <laughs> wants to cry. Hold it for the end, and then we'll cry at the okay. end. No, well, I was other, just getting- holding each other, sitting okay. on each other's lap. Anything makes you cry at someone yelling at you, stop crying. It's just <laughs> no. Go on. Fuck. No, go. I mean, no, but- can- no, no. I don't have to say anything nice. No, say something nice. No, but- no, no. I, I, I was hoping we go the show a bit longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're still going. Yeah, what what else do you want to talk about? Um, I mean, there's, I mean, you, you, you did push back on my um, suggestion to read out the list of everybody who had got on, uh, everybody who was on the show, mm-hmm. and uh, Ian Trainer, who we mentioned yesterday, mm-hmm. has put together this fucking awesome list. I don't, uh, you think it's just through the website? I don't know. I don't know. My <laughs> no, my point was I didn't want to just read a list. I wanted to be more. Specific. Well, you just read a list, dude. Well, no, no, you just read a list. Okay. How about I read and we say something about everybody? No, no, I think like, uh, you know, th- so this, this is the thing. This is like the daily talk show whilst we have it together. It's highly personal as well. And so for me, um, I'll reach out to those, to the people. Um, but yeah, I don't think, yeah, I think that's where you and I are different. And that's what's made the show amazing mm. to have different ways of doing things. Um, yeah. But yeah, you go, go ahead. So he, he sent us a list and he said, so the daily talk show family, which um, he said, Josh, Tommy, 97, GB, Jess, Amy, Bree. And then he's gone to extended family. See, this is where this is good. I'm not saying your approach was bad, Josh. We've forgotten a few people. Mm-hmm. We've actually forgotten a few people in, in your attempt. Um, he said- When you ex- forget people, you never admit that you'd forgotten them. You just- <laughs> like, well, yeah. Yeah. I didn't forget anyone. Mm-hmm. He yeah, say, yeah, Josh, yeah. I didn't forget nobody. Um, the extended family, 3D deal. Is at the of top course. of that list. We didn't talk about 3D. Mm-hmm. So 3D deal. I mean, um, I just took his sign down yesterday, <laughs> which he he developed the logo. Oh, should we talk about what we just did before? Yeah. We uh, sticker bombed Abbotsford <laughs> with the 3D deal stickers, which was the logo created into stickers. We so did. We one did. last marketing uh, <laughs> go. Which could lead to jail time. <laughs> really? No, I, I think it is like um, littering. I think so. Yeah, but um, Jess had a fun idea to do a point system so, to see where we put them. Mm-hmm. But um, and Josh hated every second of it. You didn't? Mm. Did you hate it? But you were. I didn't a, love it. You were a team player. Yeah, yeah I'm came. a team player. You came. Mm-hmm. You came. And so, anything you want to say about three D deal and the logo? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. What can I say? I think um, he brought a lot to the show. He that, he was someone that uh, said, "Hey, I'll come from a, the other side of the world." What did you think when you got that email? I didn't think it was going to happen. It was great. <laughs> well, because he so he, he emailed and said, oh, "I'll come and stay." But again, like it's all the, the for me, it's the personal stuff. He sta- the first week he stayed with Bree and I. It's mm. like those things. Yeah, that like. The thing is, I'm not too concerned about trying to get everyone or whatever, because it's like, even I'm though, either, the, mate. even though the, even though the daily talk show is finishing, the thing that reta- remains is the relationships, which is cool. Um, and yeah, like, d- like it's so cool. Like I listened to Dill's podcast, and uh, it reminds me so much of ours in the early days. And it's just fun, easy listening. It's called mm. the Process Podcast. Mm. Yeah, worth a listen. Um, uh, reading between the lines, Josh doesn't want me to read on the list, so I won't. But there's some great notes. Oh, Seth Godin. Mm-hmm. That was a fucking amazing get, which you end up getting him twice on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Have you emailed him since? No. No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think of the last time we emailed. It probably was relating to him being on the last time, which was when, during COVID. This is the, the, the part when you get out the book. That you finished writing? Oh yeah, no. Bring it out, Jess. No, that would. <laughs> no, there's no. You didn't. no. You didn't. Did you no. believe we you would finish it? Definitely. I mean, we had. Um, so for I people, believe that we. So, we- <laughs> so for people who don't know, 
and sorry if I feel like we've had too much prosecco. I've had too much prosecco. Have you really? Um, oh, maybe. Uh, this is marketing. His book I loved, and there's a um, a book not written by Seth called The Boren Letters, which is for copywriters. Oh, that's right. Scott and, Pape told you about. That. Yes. Yeah. And should so I read. About, should we talk about the unreleased episode with Scott Pape? Yeah, you can. <laughs> what do you want to say? No, there's just an unreleased episode with Scott Pape that we never dropped. I have We've, no idea about it. We this. recorded it at his farm, yeah. It got very personal. Right. He was he was yelling at me about why I'm not married yet. <laughs> He's like, mate, I feel like there's other stuff you need to sort out here. But that's not the reason. He, we ended up um, interviewing his um, groundsman. Oh, yeah. The guy who looks after his farm. Had a great interview or whatever. Was but great. it was pretty um, inside baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't even know where that audio is. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, so the Boren letters read that and, and in one of the letters it says, if you want to get good at writing, rewrite your favorite, oh, yeah. just, you know, uh, writing. So that was Scott Pape's fault. That yeah. whole thing. And so I Scott- said, I'm going to rewrite the entire book. This is marketing by Seth Godin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I got sort of- and Sco- did Scooter end up paying for it? No. So what <laughs> happened? So Trev, Trev uh, Long put in a, a bid yeah. for five hundred bucks if it was once it was finished, and he was going to put it to charity. And then he email he actually emailed. Sorry, Trev, that I haven't gotten back to. You. He um, Trev said, "Let's fucking do it. I'll give the chat like." But I feel bad that he's just going to give it the five hundred without me finishing the book. But I wrote seventy uh, something pages. Which really, like, it fucked my wrist for a, a bit. <laughs> like, it wasn't good. And also, I was using a, a pen that um, uh, Basil has found his... So, Jess, can you explain what you just showed? So, we, when we were um, talk show bombing Abbotsford before... Mm-hmm. I like that. We went around to Basil's house, which is yeah. just behind our office, and we bombed his front door and put heaps of stickers in his in his letterbox. Oh, yeah, and he's I just sent through like some pictures. <laughs> Yeah, so fun to rock home to. Can I? Oh, nice. yeah. um, and so, what was I just saying? Oh, yeah. So the Seth Godin book never got finished, mm-hmm. but that was. Um, I remember the New Year's Eve going from twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen. Twenty eighteen. So that was when. So we did an extension. It was going to be like um, That's Christmas right. or something, or New Year's, like twenty nine, like going into twenty nineteen. And then we said, okay, June 1, I think. July 1. July 1, new financial year. And then on that July Fuck 1, I still didn't, bit, yeah, I didn't have it done. Um, yeah, and, nothing and 3D Deal presented his He wrote a original book. Called, so, if you uh, look on Amazon, uh, I'm still figuring it out, I think it is. I think so, yeah. Figuring it out. Uh, uh, Dylan Toraville, you'll see his book. But he wrote a whole book and I wrote the forward for it. That was one of my favourite memories of the show. Really? Oh. It, seriously, it was so Tell so us what funny. happened, George. Well, it was meant to be July 1. It was the day that Josh was going to present his Seth Godin handwritten book yes. completed. And instead, uh, 3D Deal presented an original <laughs> novel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was a non yeah, it was it was, non-fiction. It was a biography. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, like, it was hundreds of pages. It was a full-on thing. <laughs> Look up July 1 episode. It's called July 1. Very, very funny. Yeah. And so, he, um, he after he... Finished the book. He said, "Can you? Will you do a um, uh, like a forward? forward. forward? Yeah, I really want to find it because it is like I put a lot of effort into the forward. Like I really pumped him up. Mm. Um, I'm just looking at figuring it. So I'm still figuring it out. It's on Kindle for eleven dollars. Great. And the, and can you see the forward on the on the Kindle? Yeah, so you side. can go look inside. And the cover's sick too, dude. I really um, like it. Oh, there's a problem loading the page, it says. Oh, no, it's so sold it out. Now. It's, Can definitely, you try and, it's definitely sold out. I think it's probably, oh, you know what? Go back to store. I'll do it on this. Um, here we go. Which, I mean, that was, that was I had no idea. You had no idea. He, he surprised us with He it. was the king of, and still is the king of. Mm-hmm. Look inside. Announcements. Inside. Remember, he would, remember how you would, the guy had more announcements than we've ever had on the show. Yeah. Countdown. He was doing so much stuff. Fuck, dude. It was great. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Look inside. All right. I'm still figuring it out. Copyright 2019. So, I'll just read you the forward that I wrote about Dill that was in his book. Yeah, I put Not a bit to take it. it away from Dill. No. But 
Go for it. When a Canadian college kid emails an Australian podcast with the idea of flying 21 hours to deliver some 3D printed squeegees, you'd be fair in calling him weird (laughs) and full of shit. (laughs) But six months later, to his weird word, Dylan Torreville arrived in Australia on Air Canada flight 2037 with a red baseball cap Roots tracksuit pants and clutching on to a plastic folder filled with documents for customs, we finally met 3D Dill. Oh, that's right. If you come to Australia, you'll get a nickname. And for 3D Dill, his consistent email updates on his 3D printing process secured him the name quickly. As an industrial design student, Dill was well versed in designing and 3D printing the squeegees. The reason behind the squeegees is an in depth joke on the show that I don't have time to go into, ep 14, if you're interested. But when Dill got on that plane, he wasn't just delivering some squeegees. He was embarking on one of the most challenging things he'd ever done. An overseas four-month internship with big media company and the daily talk show. Why? Because Dill sees opportunities. He has the tenacity to dream big and is steadfast in his approach. Dill built a case. How he could bring value as an intern for our business. But there was convincing he needed to do beyond us. From his teachers, to his parents, and most importantly... The credit card company. (laughs) Convincing himself. It was his mum's credit card. (laughs) He He was just figuring it out. Like any successful entrepreneur, athlete, or uh, or artist, he leaned in to the unknown. Dill understands that figuring it out isn't arriving at a specific destination. Figuring it out is accepting that we can only do our best. If you're trying to find your path, you will love this book. If you need help convincing yourself that you're on the right path, you'll love this book. And most importantly... If you're someone who believes in dreaming big and pushing against the status quo, you'll love this book. And Dill's just getting started. That's great. That is bloody great. Would would we be able to take yeah. that, reword it for our <laughs> show? It could be a summary for the show. It's a great summary for the show. But three D Dill embodies what we believe mm-hmm. in. That's why he came. Like yeah. he's mm. he fucking took a punt. Mm-hmm. He's plain nearly went down because of a a uh, duck. Yeah, geese some, went, into geese. The, went into the engine. Yeah, he flew and a geese went in the engine. Yeah, he was delayed. And then um, and then he had to come later on. Any any other thoughts before we finish up? Oh, many thoughts. Are we finishing up? Yeah, I think so. How long have we been going for? Feels like we've been going for at least half hour. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> enough for the fact. Just a short. Just just a, we'll just end up getting stuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, what have you got? Well. <laughs> Does Jess have prompts? <laughs> I can pull some together. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some padding time? Because I can pad if you need. Nah, I've got a couple. Oh, I'm she's got good. prompts. Prompts, guys. Are we, are we, do you want to get into the emotional stuff? Yeah, yet? let's speak yeah, from the heart. to the end. Okay. Josh wants to wrap it up. Okay. We'll start off soft. Well, can, do you want me before? Because are we going to finish with Josh crying? Is that going to be the big finale? I, w- I want the finish of Josh I crying. I reckon he's been and then biting every- his no. tongue this whole yeah. episode. And then everybody crying and we can blame it on Josh. Yeah, yeah. But we're not crying. I'm not going to. No, like, I'm, we're I'm not, not actually fucking now. sad, but Josh is sad, so we're sad. You don't know. No, no, I'm no, no, no. But I just, I just love you guys. And so George much. wants you to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's just been an absolute dream for mm-hmm. me. Um, being, you know, being part of this team. I feel like I've made friendships that are tighter than any other workplace that I have worked at or Mate, you've had will. one other job. <laughs> <laughs> and don't burn bridges already at your I new job. Like you're you're announcing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just love you guys so much and I've learnt so much. And, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Well, it does feel like this is what family's like. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know. But <laughs> no, I'm joking, joking. I've got a loving family. In what way? Um, In what way? Uh, no, just the, as people would hear on the podcast, there is the tension, there's the fun, there's all that sort of thing, but it all comes from a place of loving everyone. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, there is, once you get Which is how family, um, disputes happen. (laughs) But it's how they get around fucking yeah. just ripping into their yeah, yeah. brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, like, what I Jess love was- you, mate, but you're a fucking little prick. <laughs> what Jess was talking about earlier with 
being able to be yourself around you guys or, mm-hmm. you know, not not trying to put on a different version of yourself in the workplace that mm-hmm. you know, this is a workplace. It's like you guys do a great job at getting out the the um the genuine person who, mm-hmm. whoever's around you 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 make sure that they display all their quirks and and you celebrate them and mm-hmm. and you make us feel like we can just be ourselves and I've never felt more myself than I have in the last few years being with you guys. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Thanks, sure. That's cute. Uh, have you have you worked out any thing that you bit of a half assed clap? But <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it was a bit strange. Um, I didn't want to. I felt like it was, there was a condescending yeah, element to the yeah, to a yeah, clap. Yeah. Did you, nice anything thing. you've worked out about yourself that has that you didn't like that you didn't identify with a quirk? You know. Good question. Um, and I don't have an answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, well, like we bring out the Cardi B and Jess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, she's whopping around this room. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, actually, I don't know what my what my quirk is, but maybe it's so obvious to everyone listening that I'm just completely blind to it. I don't no, know. <laughs> no, you're a um, you are a easygoing guy. As much as Josh is the yeah. easygoing guy in the mm-hmm. business, yeah, yeah, you secondly <laughs> are the easygoing guy in. In respects that, like, you don't seem rattled much. Mm-hmm. Um, but highly empathetic, too. Like, someone who which is- Which is probably why yeah, you're like, not as well, rattled. But the thing is, like, you could easily get rattled through being empathetic. Because if you think about it, you sort of- And that's where, like, I struggle. It's, like, not taking in all of that stuff. But I think that you sense how people are around you. And then you, you know, do what the tool- Like, use the tools that you have to make- People feel great. The calming nature of GB is what mm. we've, we've said before. Thank mm-hmm. you. Enough very, about me. Back very calm. <laughs> and um, you want to do your? Do you want to do your reveal now or no? What's my reveal? Oh, did Josh. Oh, you the, 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 did you want to say where you're the, going the, next the, or no? The job. We can. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Do you, yeah, yeah. Announce where you're going. Uh, I'm going back to Canberra to get into fireworks <laughs> and. <laughs> He knows Huge. comedy. Yeah. Yeah, he knows comedy. Nah, I'll be, uh, Ian Trainer is on the ground. I wish we had a shot on for you right now. He's he's literally in his undies. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but he's got. He's, you've already got fireworks. He's, he loves the smell of gunpowder. And he's just cut his first porn upstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mo's four looking great. Uh, four, four, four by three. Four yeah, by okay, three. Sorry, man. Four three. Premier, yeah. premier uh, joke there. Yeah. Um, it's not even, is it? Oh, just a general. It's dimensions, TV. dimensions yeah, yeah. joke. Yeah. It's a broadcast joke. Yeah, maths yeah, yeah. joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now I'll be working for uh, Quadlock, mm-hmm. uh, just making their video content, I guess. Yeah. Um, Been great. Doing all things video production at a cool brand which is exciting so yeah dream Shout big. Out rob and rob yeah. is another one who's uh, been yeah the quaddies supporter. and this is this is the thing yeah. so many people from quadlock mm. massive supporters lee yeah. like there's yeah. been he- heaps Kill of your friends yeah and so that's the- <laughs> not don't do that that's a game that's a game lee don't kill your friends <laughs> yeah, yeah, um yeah, yeah. and yeah. so yeah there's uh, definitely yeah uh rob ward is someone who the num the first ever apple podcast review from yeah. rob ward rob. Have we got any recently? I, I've no, not, have no. you been looking? But we been could looking? we could look at the the very the very early the very early ones. Should we do the last and the first Apple review? See what happens. <laughs> no, we yeah, we yeah, can Rob, just go. Rob has been awesome, and like yeah. I was so flattered. Like you know, the day that you guys decided that we were, we were done, mm-hmm. I Rob called me uh, an hour later mm-hmm. and said, "Hey, I know it's um I know it's a bit early, <laughs> <laughs> but." Uh, <laughs> Do you want to come over here? Think about it. I said, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I will. And that's like testament to all, like even Jess, like the amount of co- people that have uh, I was just text- about to say it's lucky for some. No, no, no. It? How many people yeah. have texted? You've had like 10 people contact you about, uh, such about roles. An exaggeration. What is the real truth? Like four freelance gigs. Oh, like, she's ungrateful. Yeah, no, no, it's four. awesome. No, no, she's just being humble. Jess, how many have yeah. I got? Ask me. How many have you got? Five. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, no, no. So Robbie Ward three years ago said, <laughs> "Random but great" was the subject line. Yeah, great, great. The podcast great. that goes all over the shop, and some, and and doesn't necessarily come back to centre <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, that was nice. That's a perfect. It, yeah, that summarises it <laughs> very yeah. well. Mm. And so yeah, there's so many. You know, uh, I mentioned Russ Keys, didn't I already? There's so many people 
that have um, supported us from um, the early days. And I mean, so, fast forward to the 21st of April, our last one. Absolutely love the podcast, guys. Congrats on it, 1000. Can't wait to see the next chapter, mm. what the next chapter brings. Well, you're here. This is it. <laughs> Six out of We're five done. stars she gave <laughs> yeah. us. But can't. That's clever. I haven't seen that before. Great what? podcast in the titles. Great podcast. Six out of five stars. Oh yeah, with the emoji sort of things. Yeah, love it. That is mm-hmm. Con me into thinking that we got a six star review. Someone had worked that out. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you, TJ. Thank you, mate. I was gonna. I was gonna say. Um, I wrote something. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's not what we do. <laughs> we don't write <laughs> shit around mm-hmm. here. No, but I was thinking about how challenging. Um, this podcast has been from a personal perspective. Um, and I think you touched on it earlier, the, the differences is why there's pain, mm-hmm. but it's also why there's pleasure. Mm-hmm. And so I think about why I've got into the things I have, hard drugs, all that stuff is because of you. No, no, no. <laughs> but just the, the pain of figuring it out, and mm-hmm. we go back to Dill's book again, mm-hmm. the pain of figuring it out, Figuring our relationship out, figuring this business out, figuring out what we're talking, all the all the elements is why I think um, I've gone down the path I have. And that's a lot to do with you. Mm-hmm. And I love you. I love you. I think like similar in a similar way, I think like, um, you know, when I hear from people what they think about the show, it's um, like they're not so in – Oh, like I fucking love Tommy or I love, like, I think what people have loved about the show is sometimes I piss people off. Sometimes you piss people off. And that's, that's a real friendship, isn't it? When it's just like, there's, um, yeah, I think it's been a unique thing that we'll be able to, uh, take with us the learnings, the, I think the, um, I know how difficult I can be. And so it takes, us, just like with Bree, it takes special people around me <laughs> that will mm. uh, accept me for who I am. And just, mm. and, you know, like, even though obviously there's uh, moments of friction, it's like we've, we chose to do this and we gave it yeah. a crack. And um, that's, that's the main thing. And so, you know, I, you know, people... I think when you're going through this transition, people will say like, oh, do you regret doing it? It's like, no, like this is, for me, it's like I'm going out on a high in regards to how I feel about everyone around me, how, what I've learned. Um, and so, and I think that that's like a, you, you have definitely been the the one to say, let's keep it like, just keep going. Um, whereas I'm sort of very mm. sort of looking at every stage of like, is this right? Are we doing like, there's probably been five times in mm. the past three years where I'm like, oh, I don't know if this is working. Like, are we pushing ahead? Are we like mm. continuing mm. on? And it's funny. Cause I, oh, every one of those, I'm like, dude, come on, let's mm. go. Let's go. Yeah. Like, but this, uh, these times I feel different as well, mm-hmm. which is why we both were more mutual about it. Mm-hmm. And so, not to say it would have finished those other times, but I just, I didn't feel right. And mm-hmm. I don't think you necessarily, it's just the friction of anything mm-hmm. that makes you question what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. Like, it, and it's, and sometimes it's not worth it. And the reason we kept going was because it was worth it and you thought mm-hmm. it too. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And the other thing is you get to see when you're close with people, you get to see the consistencies. And so, like, you know, the... You can't do a thousand episodes without showing who you are. And so I think, you know, that's something that you should be proud of is that the, you know, the focusing on your family and thinking about what sort of dad you want to be, like they're things that um, you can't bullshit. Mm. Um, And so it's uh, it's kind of cool because finishing up, I see you excited about who you want to become, Mm -hmm. which is like, we've done so much about what we want this to be. And that's why it's a good time to finish it. Cause you're like, you're fucking pumped about this other existence you can Mm -hmm. have. That's going to be better for you, but it's only, it's what I gauge is that it's only because of what you've realized doing what you've done. 
that's the thing. It's always everything you do. There's no disc. You can't discount it because if you were regretting it, how the fuck do you even come to a realization that there was a different way that I would do it now if I had the chance to do it again? Mm. And that that regret is actually a almost a, a stimulus to say, well, I you're almost out of alignment with what you did, mm. which I'm not at all on this. It was a part of the journey. But what I'm saying is if you're regretting it, it's an opportunity to see a different way. But what you've done should just be, can just be seen in a light way of saying it's made me who I am right now, mm. regardless. And I think the, like a look at, um, like Jess always trolls me about talking about Nissan, my mate. I haven't seen, I see Nissan once a year now, right? But we had this two year period where it's like, we're traveling the world and we're doing this. And, and this is what I think it's like the ride or die relationships mm. that you build. And I think that that's what we've developed where it's like, um, as someone who I guess is like a little um, introverted or doesn't necessarily like, I don't know what the fuck you call it. But I th- what I like is the fact that there's a bunch of relationships now like Jem, like Pete, like Scoot, like all of it, like for do Trev. We, do you want to ben. do the list? I can, <laughs> no, I can no, do the list. Dude. No, I've no. got it on standby. There's, there's, so, there's so many people where it's like, I'm excited to pick up the phone yeah, yeah, and yeah. being like, oh, what have you, what have you been doing? Yeah. Going yeah. like going to, to lunch with George or Jess and being like, oh, like what, it, what are you up to? Like it just from a different perspective. That's not the question, mate. Where it's- You know the question. What's, a, what's your biggest challenge? No, it's no. what's been the highlight of your day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one. But it, like it, there is something at nice and I, I definitely feel when you have a business, uh, you feel the weight of everything. Mm-hmm. And so it, to me, it feels like, you, like I think this is pretty common, people with like, like with their parents when you're a kid- like I remember there was a stage with my dad where it's like he was really uptight and all that sort of thing. And then when you like leave the house, they can be a, like a different ver- – they don't have to be a grump all the time. They can sort of just be mm. like there's a different relationship. And I think that that's what I'm excited about is um, all of those relationships, including with you, mm. that is not always about oh, what's happening with this or that or, you know, because mm. that takes a, a certain toll, mm. but it also like builds this – Great relationship. Mm. Think about like with you, like with your mum being in Byron, like having that like yeah. separation means that like it's a different relationship. You can like it's, there is something nice about distance in some ways. Definitely. But every time we'll hang out, it's going to be a special mm-hmm. feeling. Not that it isn't already, yeah. but it'll be more <laughs> special when we play golf and I absolutely destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you said no one ever wins, <laughs> but he fucking He's keeps score. score. He, de- he definitely keeps He's score. Thank you, Kaz, score. as well. Like how lovely Kaz has yeah. been. Yeah. So been- and I, th- I know your point on the list is that the this isn't the end. This is a, a, a different era for, mm-hmm. for relationships that we've mm-hmm. formed. We've so many, 175. A fucking boring segment, me, me reading out all of that. But there's so many that we love. And if you've mm-hmm. been on the show, it's because we think highly of you yeah. and we have got around every moment. If you haven't been on the show, it doesn't mean we don't think highly of you. Mm-hmm. The thing is, a lot of this has been circumstantial as much as we've been strategic. There are times where we've had opportunity to get someone on based – like timing, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And so it's interesting to see what you can create when, yeah, you, you're you open to let's see what happens and also, you know, stick at something. Mm-hmm. So if you're waiting to start something, do it because the journey and the ride is fucking wild. Mm. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah. Uh, don't send us an email to hire the Daily Talk Show. Why not? Well, I guess they could. It's still going to be on. It should be. They can, we'll have it for I mean, the thing is that like years. you'll if you just Google either of us, oh, yeah, you can get yeah. our contact details if you want to reach out or whatever. Yeah. You um, can, uh, Tommy at TommyJacket.com. Oh, you, you went really hard. Josh at, at TommyJacket.com. Can I use yours? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to um, set it up. JJ though. at Tommy. Yeah. No, no. What is yours? Um, uh, well, so Josh at Josh Jansen. No, just EA at Josh Jansen. I've hired an EA. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Josh at JoshJansen.com. Tommy at TommyJacket.com. Yeah, if you want to seriously, send an I, email. It's my new inbox. Mm-hmm. What should I use? Spark or <laughs> Gmail or yeah, HubSpot? 
<laughs> oh yeah, you could HubSpot at all. You know, yeah, I've got too much spam uh-huh. coming through to that. Yeah, fucking yeah. Destroy I'm using a con- connection of um, combo of Salesforce and DialPad. <laughs> so it's um, uh, mm-hmm. we love you, we love yeah. you, Jess, we love you, George. I love yeah. you guys. Love, love you, Josh. Love you guys. Love you. Right. Cheers. To a thousand and twenty-two episodes. An empty it's a glass daily talk cheese. show. We'll see you never again. <laughs> or next time. Because um, we've broken promises. Like, so subscribe. <laughs> Jess, let's give him a and, hug on camera. All right. All right. Bye, guys. I'll hug, I'll hug Josh. You uh, okay, can wake up. Love 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 hug me. Hug me. I just got a message from the ATO. That, that doesn't sound good. What happened? No, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Love you guys. Love Thanks, you, Jess. Josh. Thank you. Last. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye, guys. Oh, my God. Shook. No tears. No tears.